One of the givens of flying RC airplanes is that sooner or later you're going to fly one into the ground. Here I made three mistakes, but it's only one and a half mistakes high. The good news is that even though it looks devastating, you can fix a plane like this and maybe for less money than you think. I know this damage looks devastating, and it is to this fuselage, but it's really the fuselage alone that needs to be replaced. The wing was one of the first things that made contact with the ground, and that torqued it right out of the top of the fuselage cabin. The top of the cabin area on a high wing plane is often a weak spot, and that actually can save you some money when you crash. In this case, the wings popped off, and they didn't really hurt them. There was one flap, had a couple of busted pin hinges, but that was it. Then I found out that a fuselage cost me about 90 bucks, and I could fix this airplane. So I ordered a new fuselage, and this story is about what I did to swap them out. I think it's best that you establish a sequence and how you look at a crashed airplane to help make sure that you don't miss anything. When I saw the condition of the call, I knew that we didn't whack the motor very hard, so I was hopeful that that would be fine, and it turned out that it was. A new call would be nice, but they didn't have them in stock at the moment, and this one will fly again. I can replace this down the road. After making sure the motor didn't have any dirt in the carburetor, I went ahead and turned it over a little bit to make sure that the shaft wasn't bent and nothing's hung up. Next I want to get the cowl off so I can see the motor mounts and see the engine more clearly. This plane uses a beam style mount and that came out of it just fine. Make sure you look at the bolts holding the motor to this kind of mount. And we want to look at the firewall very closely, all around the outside of it and where the motor mounts to it. A relatively small crash can put a lot of force on the firewall. We want to make sure that the muffler is still intact and that none of the mounting bolts are bent. Things like the muffler that stick out from the engine can get a lot of torque applied to them. In this case we didn't hit the muffler at all and it's fine. We also need to look the carburetor over real close. Here again we're looking for indications that the carb may have taken a hit. Here I look for cracks around the mounting boss where it mounts into the body of the motor. And all the linkages have to be checked to make sure that they're not bent or jammed up. We don't want any surprises after we mount this engine on a new fuselage. Next I take the tank out and take it apart so I can check all the lines for cracks and splits. We also need to make sure that the clunk weight didn't flip forward. You wouldn't think that little bit of weight would do that, but that clunk can fall over forward in a surprisingly light crash. And if you miss this, you're liable to go dead stick with your freshly repaired airplane. As you remove the radio components from the fuselage, you want to make sure you look very closely at the wires. All this fuselage damage could mean that a wire got pinched or cut when the wings torqued the top of the cabin off. Take the time to look all of this over before you start taking things out. We want to find problems now. This is also a good time to check the servos to make sure that they're all still working and that none of them have bad teeth. And it looks like everything lived through the crash just fine. Now I can go ahead and remove all the radio stuff from the fuselage. Remember to look everything over real closely as you take it out where you can see it better. The only wing damage I found was these busted pin hinges on one of the flaps. Naturally this is one of my better hinge pin installations and there's no way that these are coming out. One of the things I like about pin hinges is that I can just drill another hole right next to the old ones and put the new hinge pins in there. Everything works just fine. Remember to trim the broken hinges down so they're flush with the surface. I epoxied the new hinges in place and now we can set it aside to cure. I need to salvage the tail feathers so we need to unhook all the clevises and take our linkages out. Now I get out my highly specialized tail feather removal tool and chop these things out of the old fuselage. With everything else removed we don't have to be gentle here. We just want to save the tail feathers. I'll have to refine the glue surfaces a little bit, just make it nice and smooth so it fits right. Then we can put them on a new fuselage. From here on out, we're pretty much building a new airplane. We do everything the same way we did the first time around. Since we probably had our fill of crashing for a while, we want to make sure we get the tail feathers aligned with the wing tube and everything's nice and square. If we installed all the servos in the same positions they were in in the old fuselage, your settings are liable to be pretty close. And I do a final check to make sure that there's no busted teeth on any of the servos. Just adding a little bit of resistance here, you'll be able to feel it if there's a skip in the teeth. 
And that's really about it for rebuilding this plane. From this point on, there's really nothing different about this maiden flight than it was with the first maiden flight. Except we want this one to go better. Now we already know how to rebuild the airplane, so now we should just go out and fly it and don't hit nothing. <laughs>